Proudly sponsored by stms.studio for all your merch and printing needs. So, Nutsy, tell me, Broken Jaw, who came up with the name? I mean, where I come from, <laughs> that's classed as like a fractured mandible, you know, Broken Jaw. So, who come up with it? That was uh, myself um, many moons ago. Uh, basically, it, it came from the fact that I got my jaw broken when I was younger. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so if you feel the part of my jaw here, I never got it surgically uh, altered or anything like that. Didn't know I got it broken when I was young, but but damn it, it was uh, it was hard to put it back in place. <laughs> and yeah, it burned like hell. Does it, does it cause you body. many like many problems? Does it lock when you eat or something or when you yawn? Uh, so in the in the winter, yeah, it gets a little bit difficult. Um, I have had uh, situations where I, I, I've been eating and my jaw is, is just locked up and then yeah. I've had to kind of move it. Um, yeah, you have I, to kind of like play on it, don't you? Move yeah, it. yeah. I, I also um, have an issue with my shoulder. So uh, I've got no ligament uh, in my shoulder, uh, collarbone uh, to my shoulder uh, blade. And so that pulls across here, which then causes up the neck as well. Yeah, so, I bet. It, it can all be intrinsically linked, but but yeah, that's why I have a nice, lovely chiropractor to help sort me out. <laughs> yeah, they're good, aren't they? When they crack your back, whoa, when they do your neck. Yeah, 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 exactly. She, uh, it's when I find when she does my toes, that's the, the most pleasurable one. Like, I don't know, it's weird. Like, I've never had it done before. And then uh, she, yeah, she just randomly went, right, this is going to freak you out, but don't worry. So it, it worries some people. And she just grabs it and yanks it and a pop. And it's like, Jesus, what wow. the hell was that? What's the name of your <laughs> chiropractor? Uh, Rebecca, she's lovely. Like, yeah. So, well, welcome back, um, chiropractor is what what the name of the business is. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, big shout out to Rebecca then for uh, <laughs> not seeing shape. I mean, without you, without you working your magic on him, you know, yeah, yeah. Be able to to be able to put on a show for all of us. So, anyway, <laughs> I've had a little look at you guys. Um, you've recently signed with DC, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, John yeah. Carter. Um. And I've looked at your gigs. You've got quite a lot coming up, really. Uh, I see yeah. you're out with our, my boys in Black Coast at some point later on in the yeah, year. Yeah. They're good guys. Yeah. I was going to say that we're excited about that one because we've never played Western Supermare and uh, we've seen uh, those guys that seem to be killing it down there. So we're looking yeah. forward to hopefully joining and, and adding something to the atmosphere with them. Yeah, I was going to say, you two would go hand in hand. It's great. Yeah. And then <laughs> I have to say, you're playing... The, I've got it in front of me here. You're playing the Zombie Jesus Birthday Bash <laughs> on Easter <laughs> Sunday. Well, there yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we got um, free reign with the name. So we, we just was like, well, <laughs> what, what do we call Why it? Why not? Zomb Zombie Jesus Birthday Bash, you know? <laughs> Zombie yeah. Jesus. It was when he rose again, apparently. So I'll we'll do it that way. lovely idea. I think it's great. Yeah, you you know? never know. It might become an annual thing, right? <laughs> hey, that, yeah, there must be a gap in the market for that then. Um, yeah, yeah. You're playing with quite a few bands, aren't you? And um, that's at Subside in Birmingham. You're playing alongside Born Zero, Era's End, Stickman, uh, School Fox, just to name a few. And then obviously you got yourselves. So that's yeah, going to yeah. be a really good one. And it's free entry, of course. Mm -hmm. It's an all day. So, um, you know, a free entry, like you said. Uh, I think it starts around uh, four. Um, so pop along, like have a drink. Uh, obviously, bank holiday weekend as well. So hopefully, not many people have work on the Monday. But if, if you do have work on the Monday, then by all means, uh, drink sensibly or don't. It's up to you entirely. <laughs> yeah, just uh, you know, have a diet coke or two or three, or push the boat out and have a pint of diet coke. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, if you if you're uh, as as silly as me, then you'll have a, a few fair few pints and then feel feel a bit sore in the morning. So. <laughs> I've just seen as well, your uh, music video goes live tonight, doesn't it? Yeah, 8, eight o'clock tonight. So that'll be, um, it'd be live by the time obviously this goes out. Like, so yeah. uh, by all means, go and check that out on YouTube as well. Um, we did that one. Uh, it, it was random because we had a Halloween gig. So we decided what we'd do is just invite a load of friends, uh, close friends and family, and then just uh, do a, a weird Halloween kind of, uh, almost B movie like horror B movie horror film esque uh, music video for it. So it's it's all live footage um, as well. So all of it is from that that show. Wow. So just combined it. That's that's incredible. So talk me through the name of the new song, Sapientism. Where did that come from? <laughs> uh, so uh, it, it 
comes from uh, the annoyance of always people thinking they're giving sound advice when they're not, um, uh, regardless of if it's to do with um, you know ignorance or, or something that demeans other people or that is religious or you know it's it's a sticking point in my life. So that was where the idea because sapient advice is obviously to give sound advice or think that you're giving sound advice, and so sapientism was the uh, the move of not giving sound advice and being being a twat and basically telling everyone that you know right when you don't like so which yeah. happens quite a lot Absolutely. in the world is... you know that is like the majority of the population out there i was saying today i couldn't believe how rude some people were you know mm -hmm. for example i went to the petrol station and i was queuing up for a pump and it's like roulette isn't it you don't know which one's gonna go first so you sit there yep. and some car as i went to go to the petrol pump undertook me and literally pulled up. So I pulled right the way down the side, looked at him, and then another one did the same. I was like, oh. how rude can you get? Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, it, it doesn't take much. Manners cost nothing at the end of the day, you know? Like, I mean, I'm, I'm, women get quite a, a lot of it as well from, from men. So mansplaining would be sapientism almost because they think they're giving you good advice or sound advice. But in really, yeah. reality, in reality, you already know. You don't want to be told. And, and so therefore, you know, it, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I like it though. I think that would resonate with a lot of people. You know, there's a mark, so many bands put so many songs out there. And what really fans really want to know is the reason behind the name, the reason mm -hmm. behind the band name, the reason behind the song names, you know, what who you if you could describe yourself as a band, who would you say that um a mainstream band is most like yourself? Who would you go God. for? It's, that's a really difficult one because we're so varied in what we do. Um and we all have eclectic tastes and music different eclectic tastes as well um so i i couldn't put my finger on say just one but i mean from from my point of view we've got the 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 energy and the 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 um adrenaline and and excitement of say someone like the older school like black flag and uh and and sick of it all and stuff like that but then we have the heaviness of some you know heavier bands like um every time i die or or, or um carcass or you know it's such a massive polarizing uh, weird eclectic mix that it just kind of sits and we almost verge um the you know the, the boundaries of being new metal or metalcore but mm -hmm. but we break out of that quite quickly with heavier riffs or breakdowns or you know it, it, it's like i said it's so varied uh this which which is why we called it punk metal because it was like yeah. well that's the easiest yeah, way so to describe really it really hear the punky-esque feel in your songs you know you, you keep the listeners guessing as to what's coming next because you don't really fit into say a genre as such you've got a lot of sub genres within yourself and you kind of don't know what's coming next i was listening to your songs i was like whoa look at this it's a different one it's different just when you think you've got the right sound you just go for another another direction it's great it really suits you and that's what i personally when i'm listening to music want to hear i want to keep myself on my toes and i want to keep guessing as to what you're putting out there next yeah i think that's what kind of is missing in a lot of music nowadays is that it's it's all very it's, i i mean it's always been the case in mainstream music let's face it it's always been very like one kind of type of music comes out and then everything else kind of almost follows it along that same direction um we didn't go in with any particular anything in mind to be like oh well this is going to be the case we'll do it so we'll be completely polarizing to that or different to that instead what we'll do is we'll just get in a room see what comes out of it and play you know um and luckily enough it, when we got the first kind of five tracks we got it very quickly we got them very quickly and we were like we've got something very special and different here like we're enjoying it so surely if we're enjoying it then other people might Absolutely. enjoy it and then soon the album came about that was the other thing like you know it, it came quickly and um you know i think we'd wrote the album fully within a good six to eight months so yeah. I mean, that's pretty incredible, you know, for especially, I mean, do you all live close? I know you, you're a Gloucester-based band, aren't you? Yeah, so we, a Gloucestershire-based band. So, I mean, I, mean uh, I live in Stroud, which is um, a small little uh, countryside town. Uh, but then you have um, John and, and Sam and Sean. They all live kind of uh, more in, in the forest of Dean and, and uh, Josh lives Dursley. So we're, we're quite spread out. So the guys travel, um, you know, an hour to practice, an hour away from practice. Um, and, and me and Josh live closest, so he's about for half hour, and I'm about like fifteen minutes. So yeah, 
yeah, it, it's, it's you know, that that in itself, to think that you've put an album together in that length of time and you all live kind of, you know, a couple of hours from each other, that's pretty good. It's pretty good going. Because as well, practice, when you when you do come to practice, it's not like it's just round the corner and you can just have a catch up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty nice to see each other, you know, and catch up what you've missed out on. And because you've all got families, you've all got partners and stuff, and it must be really kind of cool to be able to say, oh, I've done this this week and I've done that, you know, and then, because I bet you all get on really well as friends as well. Yeah, I think the, the wonderful thing is, like you said, it gives you kind of a, a bit of time to away from each other to then talk about, but also it, it, it gives us time to then, uh, anything that we've built up over that time of being away, uh, yeah. we get into that practice room and we just blow out and we talk to each other as well and try and, you know, help each other. Um, it is, it's nice. We, we do it kind of religiously as well. So we do practice every Sunday. Uh, so that is our church, essentially. <laughs> like, you know, we, we get in that room, we, we release everything and then we go on with our lives again. It would be even special this Sunday then, isn't it? Woo, yeah, yeah, exactly. We class a gig as is our practice, so we won't practice now for like I think because we've got an, another gig in Manchester the weekend after as well. Um, so we won't practice those because we're essentially playing the whole entire set. The the problem with that is because we've been working on the new album, we don't really get to uh, obviously work on that until say we get a break. So that I think that break break comes in in May, and so we'll just jump back straight onto that new album um, and put the uh, live set to one side. Yeah, I mean, that'll be really good as well because it's a new direction, isn't it, as well? So it's kind of keeping you all on your toes. I mean, how easy for you is it learning to the new songs? Like, all together, it must, there must be some times where you get so frustrated with each other because you're just trying to learn and one of you is going to go wrong somewhere. I, I think we don't put pressure on ourselves. Um we, we we know we're gonna we're, we're human we know we're gonna mess up like you know so uh, again I, I guess that's almost the joy of being in a punk metal band as well is mm. that you, you kind of just like uh if we mess up or if we you know make a mistake then that's not the end of the world yeah we, we kick ourselves as musicians but we don't knock each other down like you know so if, if you know someone made a mistake on, on one particular thing then we're not all going to turn around and just be like right gotta get better on that or do that better instead it's just like a cheeky like no like you know but i think we each individually practice as well when we're away from practice so i, I know john uh, and sean they both play so john the guitar is one of the guitarists he definitely picks up his instrument and, and practices i know sean practices pretty much on the drums every day but that guy's drumming is just uh, astounding in terms of the technicality that he plays so um it shows you know and this this next album, I think, is an even more extension of what we did with this first one, where we've we're, we're showing off a little bit more, but we've also made it very uh, varied in terms of our stars. We've we've let it go in terms of going. Let's just let the reins go and see where this song goes or where this song goes. So some songs are a little bit more uh, uh, punky, and some songs are a little bit more um, slammy and heavy and dirty. So you know, like it, it mixes it, and and that's what I can't wait to um get this album so we're pretty much done with that uh we're just uh we're just honing that and making sure that we're happy before we get in the studio and start recording it see that's really that's really cool to hear and you know going back to making mistakes on the stage i just like calling it limited edition performances because <laughs> yeah. you're never ever going to get two of the same performances then you know oops we, we did this chord rather than that chord never mind and you know what the audience we're on the wiser half the time i mean no, exactly. you are but actually, in you know, nine out of ten times, you just you don't even I don't even notice a lot of the time. No, I think um that's the thing. I think again, I think it's more of a perfectionist thing on 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 yeah. musicians' part. I mean, a, a, any kind of artist is, from what I gathered and from all the years that I've talked to artists, they've all said the same thing that they're hard on themselves. They want perfection, and unfortunately, but perfection is a, an unpursuable thing. Like in terms of, you will never hit perfection, but Absolutely. you can get as you drive close yourself as you want so to. Yeah. mad by trying to, you know, there's people out there with high function anxiety, and I at some point, at some points, have that, and I put so much pressure on myself, and actually, I make it worse. I think yeah, yeah. if you're natural and you're more comfortable with it, you'd probably do a better job anyway. I think you need, um, I mean, I think you need a certain amount of pressure to, yeah. to be able to push yourself, but I think you need someone else there as well to to make sure they go, look, stop, what you've done is is amazing. I, I mean, even athletes are the same to, to a degree as well, you know, like 
they'll always push themselves until breaking point. But everyone everyone needs that like someone just to be like, whoa, 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 what you've done is is amazing. Just take a breath, like you know, um, and and take some time away come back to it as well that's what I always say about you know with the songs and with recording and creating um just just take you know a few days or a week away come back uh, and what you thought you might have loved you might then dislike and what you might have disliked you might love so you know and then you build on that you, you add to it you know also depends what kind of mood you're in as well you know mm-hmm. like I always say with songwriting if you're sad your songs tend to be sadder if you're happier they tend to be more upbeat so yeah. you know coming out of COVID a lot there were a lot of sad songs created and a lot of people were struggling and things so it's nice to see bands back out there as well it's nice to see whenever when I did a bit of research with you guys it was nice to see the caliber of gigs you've got lined up because there's a lot of venues that have closed down since yeah. obviously COVID so it's nice to see you getting out there I mean you're in Wales aren't you I think um, later on in the year end of the year yeah yeah um, yeah it's it's mad as well because we've got like i think we've got something in the in the ballpark of about 23 gigs that we've got wow. booked but we just haven't announced them yet because uh, we want to give as much attention as we can to each show uh we're going we, we announced um today that we're supporting uh in search of sun it's in, sun, london, in as london, well. london yeah so who, i mean that who are is my boys out. wow what a gig that'll be yeah yeah, I, I love those guys to bits. Um, we've been meaning to try and get a gig for together for years. Um, and, and like you said, like with lockdown and everything like that and, and COVID, it was kind of a decision that we, we were like, look, let's just take pretty much everything that we get chucked our way. Let's try and get as much as we can because we don't want to, um, you know, sit on a lot of laurels and, 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 and not have fun. Um, and like you said, with creating as well, um, you know, our last song from, uh, Purge Yourself was created Lackluster, which was the second single. That was actually created during lockdown. We would have video calls and, and exchange riff ideas and exchange, uh, you know, structure ideas and then lyrics and everything like that. And the first time we came into the room, we played it and we played it all the way through. And it was like, whoa, that was weird. <laughs> like, because we hadn't played it together yeah. before. So, yeah. So wow. it's beautiful. I know. And you know how lucky we are to have the modern day technology that we've got. Mm-hmm. Because if it had happened like how many years back, we wouldn't have been able to do that. So I bet no. like you guys saying as well, you know, to catch up musicians, to be able to share ideas, to be able to do it live as well. Yeah, we, we ended up, um, we, we kept, we tried to keep, keep as much as we could that structure around our Sundays and weekend practices. Because, uh, you know, we, we would see each other. So it was a bit weird going from not seeing each other to, you know, what we're going to do. So we, even if we didn't say practice or create, what we ended up doing was basically playing some games, um, you know, streaming some games and having a laugh, you know? Uh, and, and I think that kept us going, um, you know, we all at that point were really down and depressed, but then we knew everyone was suffering and, and, and struggling. So we were trying to, get that kind of positivity and energy up by doing things together um and i think that that's yeah like you said modern day technology really did help that which is not not a lot really like that you don't see that happen nowadays like it's, it's quite difficult at points with uh, with modern technology and, and opinions as we've as we specified earlier yeah absolutely absolutely so tell me then um what's been your favorite moment of any any gig any show any tour that you've played on What's your favourite personal moment? Oh God! I mean, my I, I mean, so far having the album um, released and and getting that physical copy of that vinyl like in my hands um, was a dream come true. Uh, playing Bloodstock was a dream come true as well. Um, but I think I think just I don't think I can just say one particular gig every gig that everyone moves at and enjoys themselves and I see them smile and banging their heads. I think that's that's it like so the next one it's always the next one the next one is my favorite like because I think it's it's just living in that moment and to yeah. keep going back and honing into the past is just going well it never be better than that or it never be as good as that whereas um, I, I appreciate and love every single gig that we've done and, and everyone that's turned up and enjoyed themselves but I want the next one to be yeah, just absolutely. as good you know and you'd never know who's there either. So you turn up to these gigs. I always say to bands, it doesn't matter how many people are there because it's not it's not about the quantity. It's the quality that's in the room. You know, you could go yeah. to the smallest, deepest, darkest venues, but you don't know who's lurking at the back. You can have a promoter from a big, big 
you know, festival or a big tour company just sitting there. You'd never know. So that's why I always tell everyone, no matter what slot you have on festivals, whether it be the opening slot, the closing slot, whatever, play your heart out and just play as yeah. good as you can. Because you don't know I mean, we, we got a review in Metal Hammer because of, of, of the same situation. You know, we we just played on, on Bloodstock uh, stage and, and someone came and reviewed us while we were playing and we didn't know. And then suddenly you find out and you're like, what, what the hell? Like, um, but yeah, you're right. Like, um, but you shouldn't like at any point you should never play for, you know, someone particular being in that room. Yeah. It, it should be, you're playing because you love and enjoy the play, you know, yeah. um, we've played to other bands um, and we've played to, you know, 300 people. Like it, it, it makes no difference. We're still just there on that stage just to have fun. We've played on massive stages. We've played on small stages, you know, it's, it, it's about having fun yourself. If you're not having fun, then don't do it is what we, we that's time is ready to stop, is it? Yeah, exactly. That's literally our motto in the band is if we're not having fun, then we're not doing it. So, um, and I think it's, it, it definitely it, it's felt across the board between us. We, we, we've had some points where we've been like, eh, but you do as a band, you get points where it's like, that show wasn't as great as I expected it, but that's your own expectations of it, you know? If you go in with without expectations, like then you tend to be, you know, a little bit more uh, uh, surprised by it. You know, though, you you thinking that, I bet your fans are there thinking, wow, that was like one of the best <laughs> things of my life, you know? It's amazing yeah. how people interpret things. I think we can be a bit hard on ourselves, but I think there's a lot. Do you have many followers down in Gloucestershire? Have you got yeah, yeah, followers we... that follow you around? Yeah, yeah. We, we've got, um, I, I think I've got a load of guys coming uh, from Gloucestershire up to the Birmingham gig on Sunday, to be honest. Um, they, they've messaged me and let me know what they're going. So, so we'll, we'll see. But again, I never. And even if my mates message me saying they're going, I, I would never be like, oh, they're coming, like, and get myself you hyped know, up. But it, exactly. Something could happen in the, like, people's lives, you know, uh, uh, different. Everyone has their own stuff going on. So, you know, stuff can happen out of nowhere as well. Um, I think with the whole disappointment of how a gig goes is not necessarily a disappointment of of the crowd it's it's a disappointment on ourselves if, if we yeah. don't feel like we've done a very good job then um again we, we kind of beat ourselves up but but the other guys pick each other each other up you know so if i felt like i had a bad gig they'd be like but oh, it's fine you did amazing like or yeah you made a couple of mistakes but whatever you know you're still human at the end of the day though that's exactly. what yeah exactly. you know people go to these gigs and think oh everything should be perfect and actually that's not how it goes it's either tech issues sound issues you know if one thing doesn't go wrong then you 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 should put the money yeah. on to be that guy basically yeah. because something yeah. will always go wrong whether it be the smallest thing biggest thing who knows but the, the main thing is bouncing back from it getting yourself yeah. back up there and putting yourself back out there that's one of the bravest things that any band can ever do if you've had a bad gig show yourself out there go back and face it because it's really easy to kind of go you know what I don't really want to, I don't want to go back out there. You sort of feel a bit embarrassed, I suppose. But by doing it, you know, you've you've been brave and that's the main thing. I think um, when when it comes to like stuff like that, I mean, Bloodstock, for instance, was uh, we had uh, terrible um, tech issues in the beginning. We went on later, which meant we, we lost a couple of uh, people in the crowd. But um, instead of, you know, getting worried about it we just checked in on each other you know you look like yeah, you're, yeah. you're good you're good and then and then you kind of go right we're good right let's smash this regardless of everything else uh, and we you should use it to fuel you rather than to uh drop you down you know um and we came off that stage we, we had a group hug and went yeah shit happened but but we got through it and everyone had fun and that's the main thing I and, and then bucket list yeah, yeah. You know, and then, the best and then thing I... about Bloodstock is you can yeah. hear it outside whatever whatever yeah. stage you play on. So there's probably a lot of people. It might not seem that you've got a lot of people watching you, but actually there's a lot of people sitting outside listening. I've been one of them people in the past. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, though. Like, you know, people randomly walk in and out of stuff. I think one of the funniest things about that whole entire situation, though, was was we were out in, in that huddle being like, that was amazing. We played Bloodstock, whatever. Like it, it, it doesn't matter about the the, the sound issues. We, we did this. We ticked this off the list. And then I looked as as we were doing this. I looked, and there was Barney from Napalm Death walking by, and I was like, "That's Barney, isn't it?" And then John, who's a massive Napalm Death fan, went Barney. And I was like, "Barney, Barney, Napalm Death," and he was like no and then he just ran he just ran and left the huddle and then went and got a picture with him and that made it all okay for him again like you know 
yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of those weirdest things of being fans of music but also being musicians is, well, do you want me to tell you something that? about napalm death so my last name embry oh really yeah so uh, <laughs> i'm I've spoke to Shane about this. I'm sure we're related somewhere down the line. It's quite yeah. funny, really, when people let see my ID, and I'm like, do you know who I am? And they're like, no. I'm like, I'm an Embry, I am. And then every That's time nice. I think of that, I think, so Shane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Mad, isn't it? That's, That's awesome. Like, yeah. but it's, a, it's a small world, isn't it? That's the weirdest absolutely. thing about it. It gets smaller in the music uh, in, in circle as well. That's what I've found over the years. Of course it does. Yeah. That's what's brought us all together in the end of yeah. it. It's got to be it's somewhere. a family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We are one big family. And going back to sound issues and things, you know, at festivals, 99% of people have sound issues because yeah. it's just the calibre of gear that they've got to change over, different setups. Yeah, exactly. Like, we didn't, like, again, we took it on the chin. We we, we took the win over it because, you know, not every band can say that they've done that. No. Um, and and so it was a uh, we're moving in the right direction, you know. Um, we we're proud of it, and so uh, again, it it was like I said, one of my highlights uh, from from so far has been that that's ticked off. Next one is uh, is the big ones of, of download and 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 say whacking and stuff like that. So oh, you know, you've got to have as imagine. aspirations. Ooh. Yeah, grass yeah. pop. Yeah, again, I have aspirations, have dreams. Do you know, it's going back though. So I used to put on um, a metal festival held in Northwich called Lost Ock Festival. And yeah. one of the bands that played was Countless Skies. And yeah. I checked in on them not long ago to see where they've played. And they have played some big ass festivals. Yeah. To think that they gave up their time for free to come play our charity event and to watch and, and just see how they've progressed. It's amazing. And that's the thing though. It's lovely that you take pride in that as well. Um, you know, I, I think that's when you can tell people that really do love music and 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 want to help the bands and stuff like that is when you put on a show, but then you still are like, I wonder how they're doing. Always like, you know, do, you know, always. Yeah. Always just that's, check that's in. Beautiful. It's nice. Yeah, it's again, it's again, like we've said, it's a family at the end of the day. Like, if you get on with them as well, so if they came and were respectful and lovely and nice and, and, and played and enjoyed themselves and you enjoy them, then you know, you need to keep those connections in your life. Like, you, if you get on, you know, absolutely. And I try and do my best for the bands, you know, I give them a platform to kind of. Showca uh, showcase their talent and just spread the word because there's a lot of people out there that don't know things about the bands personally you can look at an album cover and you can think oh you know this band are amazing but I actually wanted to get to know them as people too and that's yeah. the aim of what I want to give people I want to be able to say look you, you like your band well here they are as people get to know them just so they you know people that maybe are feeling a bit anxious at gigs and don't know how to approach you could always just drop something in and be like Hey, I heard I heard that on the interview. I didn't even know that, and that's really nice. Yeah. It kind of breaks down that barrier. Gives a deeper meaning. I, I mean, I've always been uh, a fan of not necessarily giving the whole story of of what the songs are about because I like when people come to me and give their interpretations yeah. of it, and I don't ever want to ruin someone else's interpretation because that's what they've you know linked themselves with. Um, but but given the little bit of like this is what it was written with in mind, but but you take it in your own uh, context and, and enjoy it in your own way and keep you you know nostalgia with with it from you. You, know, you have a personal thing. thing with it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's I like think, when you read um, a book and they bring out a film. You, yeah. Your interpretation of a book is totally different sometimes in that film. Because it's in your head. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You 100%. want to create, you want, you want that atmosphere. You want to be able to create your own story, like you said. And that's the yeah. magic that music brings. You know, you can lie in your own room and just listen. And I can listen to something that maybe my friend will hear something totally different. And, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's fantastic for me. I mean, with you saying about what genre you kind of fit into... The way you were describing it, you should put it into a cake. You should <laughs> get all the ingredients, put it into a cake. I mean, man, I'd eat that. Like a Absolutely. pie chart. Can you imagine? Yeah. Just a little sprinkle of this, a sprinkle of that. Done. <laughs> like the Mary Berry of uh, music now, I do. It's quite funny. I think it, it's been lovely having... Um... It's been lovely having fans come up to me after shows and stuff like that and, and telling me um, the influences that they think... Um, that they hear within my vocals and the music, but it's also hit, um, lovely hearing like when people have listened to the album and having it. So I, I mean, I've been compared to a couple of my 
favorite um, vocalists. Would never in my mind did I write any of my vocal or lyrics that way. With, with being, oh, I'm going to sound like this person. I'm going to sound like that person. It was just that I've grown up listening to those. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's it's lovely having other people's interpretations of of, right. of our music. I agree. Now, so my interviews would not be complete without a little quizzy quiz quiz. I love my <laughs> quizzes, right? I'm trying to find the cleverest band. But I've gone down a different route with you tonight. I thought, hmm, I'm gonna give you a bit of a, a bit of a break because you're on your own. So oh, yeah. the band mates have uh, left you. When we're in person, I will grill you up. <laughs> but what do you prefer? Red, red sauce or brown on a typical bacon or sausage butty? Red. Red sauce. Tea or yeah. coffee? Uh, tea. What's your favourite colour? Green. Cats or dogs? Cats. Beer or wine? Beer. Mountains or a beach holiday? Beach. Ooh. Where would you go? Favourite destination? Uh, somewhere um, Scandinavian maybe actually. Nice. Somewhere cold. That's the, the weirdest part about that is <laughs> a beach would be better than a mountain because a mountain's blustery but if we're going cold. like say Finland or Iceland or somewhere yeah, like that. Like no, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, middle middle of nowhere, like in a nice cabin, like you know. So beer or wine? See, I I I like that was when I said beer, I was like, I I love a red, a nice red. You can't beat a, a good red wine. So so yeah, but beer both. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> if I, I can. Like right, so. I'm going to ask you a few questions because I have to. Um, how many ghosts chase Pac-Man at the start of each game? It's between one and five. Yeah, I was going to say five. Four. <laughs> nice. Oh, start. Oh, yeah, what is the in. world's fastest bird? Uh, the ostrich. No, ostrich. Oh. Peregrine falcon. Oh, yeah, because someone told me that the other day as well. <laughs> How many faces does a dodecahedron have? Uh, eight. Nope. Seven? Twelve. Twelve, damn it. That's Which my, that's my Which is body part fully grown at birth? Ooh. Uh, I know this one. The asshole. <laughs> close is the eyeballs. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> what, the asshole? I, I might write them, that's actually. The first, say, that's yeah, the first yeah. one. That is the first one that gets grown, isn't it? You, everyone is grown from the asshole first. <laughs> is that how they do it? Is that why there's yeah, so many yeah. in the world? Yeah. <laughs> Don't evolve. I like that. Yeah, like we that. all begin as assholes. That, that's how it works. I like it. <laughs> well, listen, it's been ace talking to you. You've done well on my little quiz quiz. And um, oh, <laughs> you did. You know why? It was good. You've got fun, man. I love good fun bands because you can just chill. Oh, just have a laugh. Yeah. And that's the aim of this. I want people to leave with a smile on the face, you know, no matter what, with gigs. I can talk to the bands after, just cheer them up. No yeah. matter what performance they've got or whatever's going on at home, I can just bring a bit of happiness to them. And that's what I really like doing. And I think it's great. So to see you leaving with a smile on your face, that's my job <laughs> done tonight. Big tick. Well, I, I appreciate your uh, your positivity and, and your, your candour as well. I, I, I've had a lovely inter interview, so thank you for asking and, and, and Oh, and you're more than welcome. And listen, what we'll do <laughs> is we'll definitely catch up at some point. I'm coming to yeah. it near you. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll have to sort then. it and we'll have to just have a chat in person because it'd be nice with you and your mates yeah, to see how you'll, you know, how you'll get on and vibe and it'll be great. But listen, yeah. have a good evening. Thank you for giving up your time. And I look forward to catching up and seeing where you're at in a couple of months or something. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, have a good evening as well. Uh, enjoy pleasure. the music video if, if, yeah. you, if you get a chance to see it. <laughs> Will do. And uh, enjoy your zombie Jesus birthday bash on Sunday. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have a few. Guys, subside <laughs> in Birmingham. That is where the party's at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Thank see you. Later. Bye. <laughs>